Hi, it's Jamie, Progressive's Employee of the Month, two months in a row. Leave a message at the... Hi, Jamie. It's me, Jamie. I just had a new idea for our song about the Name Your Price tool. So when it's like, tell us what you want to pay, hey, 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 and the trombone goes, blah, 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 and you say, we'll help you find coverage options to fit your budget. Then we just all do finger snaps while a choir goes, savings coming at ya, savings coming at ya. Yes? No? Maybe? Anyway, see your practice tonight. I got new lyrics for the rap break. Progressive Casualty Insurance Company and Affiliates. Price and coverage match limited by state law. Geico presents Yikes. Another voicemail from your roommate. Sup, roomie? Hey, a pipe burst in the basement. It's completely flooded. Anyway, I called for someone to fix it, but in the meantime, I was thinking we could finally have that indoor pool party we've always wanted. I got some cool swan floaty things already going. Could you pick up some chips on your way home? Later. The GEICO Insurance Agency could help keep your personal property protected. Like if your roommate isn't the brightest pool float in the flooded basement. Visit GEICO.com to see how easy it is to switch and save on renter's insurance. Did you grow up with the Nest PlayStation? Star Wars cartoons and ABC TV. Do you like to think you would win in a fight between Batman and the Master Chief? Comics, games, movies, music, and TV. They're gonna tell you everything you need. Superheroes or nothing got your back They're gonna save the world of geeks Comics, games, movies, music, and TV They're gonna tell you everything you need Superheroes or nothing got your back They're gonna save the world It's been quite a long day of watching more and more streams of conferences. I've been doing this since noon. We're looking at about 11 o'clock at night now. So I'm going to talk about the final two that are for the day, which were exhausting because of how generally good they were. <laughs> First up was the Ubisoft one. Uh, they started out by uh, having Assassin's Creed uh, videos playing in the background where they had an orchestra play music. It was pretty cool. They're going to be going on the road with... Uh, like a live concert thing, which is kind of neat. Uh, then they went uh, into showing off uh, a bunch of different titles that were... Some were good, some were bad. Um, I skipped by the ones that I didn't really care for, but overall, this was a really, really good conference. They had... Uh, starting out showing a ton, I think it was like 10 or 12 minutes of gameplay, of pure gameplay, of uh, Watch Dogs Legion, Watch Dogs 3, which looked just absolutely nuts uh it's hard to even really <laughs> describe you know what was going on uh without going into larger detail so basically there is no main character in this game everybody that you possibly come in contact with in the world can become an operative that you can control and recruit and they all have different abilities there's like a grandma who's good at hacking there will be somebody who's a good fighter there's somebody who is good at robotics there'll be somebody who's good at sneaking around and when they die, there's permadeath, and you have to take over somebody else to then keep moving forward. So it's a really cool concept that I th wish they had done earlier on, but this might actually bring a lot of people to it. Now, that being said, the graphics are some of the best I've seen of any Ubisoft title. And I believe uh, it's partially programmed or, or made by Ubisoft Toronto which is the team that made Starlink last year that uh, I was absolutely enamored with. They are really good at programming. So uh, I'm going to probably get it day one. Uh, if we don't get a review copy, it'll be a, a must-buy for Alex at least. And I was talking to Mr. Christopher and Birdman, and they both said uh, that it's probably a day one buy for them as well. Moving along... Uh, they showed off a few other things. Uh, there was a show. They, they, the guy from Always Sunny in Philadelphia, the one that, I can't remember his name, but he's the guy that occasionally got fat for the show just because he thought it would be funny. Uh, but the guy that created, uh, not Charlie Day, but the guy, other guy that created uh, It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia uh, is working with Ubisoft uh, to make a television show, which is going to air on Apple TV. They didn't say during the show, but I looked it up and it's Apple TV. So it's a high-budget uh, comedy like single camera comedy with uh, Abed from 
community in it as well. And I think uh, I think I saw F. Murray Abraham in there, which is interesting. And it's about a company that's producing a new video game expansion for their most popular MMO in the world called Mythic Quest. So Ubisoft is doing all the animations and everything for the Mythic Quest uh, fake video game, and then they're filming it with like a high budget uh, camera system for your standard sort of. It looks like uh, like Brooklyn Nine Nine style comedy. Looks pretty cool. I uh, was not expecting that. That was very different. Then they showed off uh, new Ghost Recon Breakpoint. Uh, it's got the dude. Why am I drawing a blank on his name? The dude uh, Joe Bernthal, the Punisher, isn't it? It looks pretty cool. Uh, it looks higher budget than I was expecting. And they ended it with the Terminator music. So I'm assuming there's going to be uh, a mode where you can either defend against the Terminator or you can reskin yourself or there's some sort of weird Terminator mode, which I, I they didn't show off, so I'm assuming they're going to show it off at another time. Then they showed off Rainbow Six Quarantine, which I was assuming was just another expansion to the Rainbow Six game because it's in like season three or year four or something like that now. So it's not. It's a brand new title. It's a new uh, Rainbow Six game, a completely different style than what they've ever done before in that it's a game where you're having to stop an infection that is giving like supernatural hallucinations type thing. So it's what if you mix the supernatural game with the super realistic gameplay controls of Rainbow Six. It's going to be very scary probably just because you know at any time we can one shot yourself to death. So I know Birdman is really interested in that. That looked really cool. And then uh, they followed up with uh, a couple neat things and that and again not really revealing new stuff there was surprisingly not a uh, Nintendo crossover like they've done for the last few years there was no Miyamoto uh, there was no crossover title so maybe we'll see something like that at uh, the Nintendo thing tomorrow because it was odd the way they ended the show it almost ended like 10 minutes early it felt there was no montage at the end it just sort of feed cut to outside where they were playing games and it was like it just seemed timed weird. Everything was perfect until the very last couple minutes. So I have a feeling something was cut there for some reason. But anyway, uh, they did finish by saying that they're making the Division movie uh, and that they cut David Lynch, the director, to make it, and it's going to be on Netflix. So maybe we'll have a good Netflix movie other than Bright. So <laughs> that'll be pretty cool. Now, moving along... Uh, Johnny got a toy golf set when he was three, and from that day on, he was hooked. All he wanted to do was golf, golf, golf. He'd be on the links before school, after school. All he ever wanted was to go pro. And then, one day, when he was holding his grandson and thinking about his 12 handicap, Johnny realized it just might not happen for him. But you know what did happen for him? He switched to Geico and saved a bunch of money on car insurance. So that was good, and so was hanging out with his grandson. Technology Truths, brought to you by Geico. Technology Truths. Truth. Teenagers can communicate entirely in emojis. How was the birthday party? Pizza slice, kitten, soccer ball, pineapple? Truth. It's so easy to switch and save on car insurance at Geico.com. What are you talking about? Paperclip, shoulder shrug, high five, wizard hat? What? Geico. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more. In between conferences, Xbox went back on the air, and they started talking about a few new titles they showed off. They showed off the Surge 2, which looks interesting. Uh, then they also showed off something that I wasn't expecting. They are canceling the backwards compatibility for Xbox One project. By canceling, I mean they're not going to make any more backwards compatible. They announced the last eight titles on the Xbox and the last 15 or 16 titles on the Xbox uh, 360, and the highlights of them are all of the original Xbox Splinter Cells, uh, as well as a couple uh, Final, not Final Fantasies, a couple Square Enix RPGs, Infinite Undiscovery, and I think, was it Last Remnant or something else available on the 360 that'll be ported over and work? Uh, and they announced Two Human, <laughs> which is funny because they even made fun of it. They said Two Human, and because nobody will buy it, they're giving Two Human away for free to any Xbox user. You don't even have to be an Xbox Gold member. They're just giving you Two Human for free. Uh, and then they said that because they're already moving the team over to work on Xbox Scarlet, which is the Xbox Two, whatever you want to call it, uh, because they want to make every single game for four generations worth 
all playable on that system. So they're getting a head start on it now. So that's why they pushed out so many of these games right now. So nothing else will work as far as like if you're if there's a game you're holding out for, let's say like a fairly rare Japanese game on the Xbox or the 360, you're not going to get it here, but you'll probably get it on the next Xbox, which is pretty cool. Then the next conference started, uh, which was the Square Enix one. And I was pretty hyped for this because I knew Final Fantasy was going to be shown. They'd already shown a b- brief trailer. Uh, I was a little confused at first because I had heard it was going to be episodic. And then it was talked about that it might not be. It is going to be episodic, but it seems like they're fleshing out the story. They mentioned, well, first of all, the actual conference was larger than they've ever done for anybody else. Like ever, ever before at E3. Uh, they took up like a full ballroom with like the full theater seating and everything. Previously, they'd always done very small venues or like direct type things to small media. Uh, this was a very big, like, U- ubisoft size show, which was very surprising. So I knew they had to show off a lot of really cool shit. So Final Fantasy shows up. They do mention that there's some stuff in the trailer, like the spirity sort of things flying around you. They're taking lore and elements from all their books, all the ex- extended universe stuff, like Crisis Core, everything, and they're putting it into the game and, and in continuity and making it and expanding upon it. So there'll be new extra side missions and new things to do within the game that you never did before to f- make a more complete story than they've ever had. So even if you're a player who's never pl- or played many, many times, like me, it'll be a brand new experience the first time you play it again, which is pretty cool. Uh, they did say that the game is going to be on two Blu-ray discs because uh, they can't fit it all in one, and that's just for this section where the this game is going to take place in, in Midgar. Where basically when you leave it, uh, which is like three quarters of the way through, just about about three quarters of the way through the first disc uh, of the PlayStation 1, that's where they're cutting it off. So it sounds like they're going to be three or four games in, in the series, and it'll probably be a yearly thing they come out with every year there's a new version or, or a continuation, because they're making it like a, they're expanding upon it. It's not just a, a re- remake, it's a complete expansion where it's like lots of more shit to do. Uh, the battle system is a perfect hybrid of like the Final Fantasy XV system and the classic act of time battle. When it's your turn to act, time slows down to let you select what you want. You can arrange for how long you want the time to select. It can be full weight. It can be slow down. Uh, it, so it's a nice hybrid of an old and new. The graphics look fantastic. The game has also gone back to being completely PlayStation 4 exclusive. It was going to be on every platform, but I think Sony probably paid some money to get that exclusivity back for it. So it's going to be... PS4 exclusive comes out in March, and it's going to be, uh, sounds like they said on two discs, which is crazy. That's the biggest game, I think, ever released to a home console physically. So that means we're talking like 110, 120 gigs just to install it, which is insane. But uh, you know what? Why not? (laughs) Let's push our systems to the max. Let's, Let's free up some hard drive space, put that on there. So they showed that off. They actually showed a lot more gameplay a lot more video. The fans in the crowd were pretty happy. This doesn't seem like it was plants like there were at the Bethesda. This seemed like people genuinely happy to see the things. So uh, after they showed that off, we ended up uh, moving into... They showed some stuff for their mobile titles, which I'm not going to really get into because, let's be real, the mobile titles are not... Uh, <laughs> they're not exactly what we want. Uh, they then went and showed off an, a new expansion for... Uh, Kingdom Hearts 3, where it looks like you get to control some of the bad guys for the first time, which looks neat, and it's coming out, uh, I think, at the beginning of the, the winter, or something like that. Uh, they're also showing off two new Saga titles. Well, not new. Uh, Romancing Saga 3, just like Romancing Saga 2, is being remastered and brought to the West and fully translated, as well as uh, another Saga title that looked like it was a mobile title that we never got. We're getting an English version of that, and it's coming to all platforms. Uh, then they also showed off a brand new title, called Outriders from the same team that made, I think it was called Brink, and uh, they also made the the uh, Gears of War Judgment game. So it's going to be a shooter with a uh, pretty cool aesthetic. Didn't show gameplay, showed in-game engine models, but not like in-game actual gameplay. So that was pretty neat. And then they also showed off Final Fantasy VIII Remastered. So not a remake, remastered like they did with Seven and Nine when they put it on other systems, which means it'll be worth picking up probably. Uh, they also showed off uh, uh, the Last Remnant remastered on the Switch, which dropped today, like right away. They also said that all of their music is now going to every streaming platform like Spotify, with, like immediately as soon as the show went live. Then they also showed off um, uh, they showed off a couple, like I said, mobile titles that eh, 
Not a huge fan. They showed a little more of Crystal Chronicles Remastered. They announced that it's going on mobile platforms as well as the Switch uh, that they had already previously announced. And uh, then they showed off an indie title from their, I think it's their indie series where they get, it's like Steam Greenlight type thing where they take small studios and publish their stuff. There's a racing title coming out. It looks kind of neat and cute. Who knows? Uh, I don't know when exactly when that one's coming out. But then the big reveal at the end was they had uh, Marvel come out and they had Crystal Dynamics and, uh, and Eidos Montreal come out to talk about the Avengers game that's been in development for three or four years. Now, it's not in the MCU. It's a completely new story. So it's basically the first thing they're doing, I guess, after this next phase. It, the character designs look like the 80s and 90s uh, cartoon slash comic book designs, which is pretty cool. Uh, the, they're not the best models because they're still sort of alpha footage, but all the backgrounds and, and like the, all the, everything but the character models looks completely next gen and amazing. Now, it's going to be multi-platform, but it is coming to PS4 first, and there's a lot of extra features and stuff coming to PS4 first as bonuses. Uh, it launches in May of next year. And they showed off that they made a very big point of saying this. This is, has a single-player campaign, but also online co-op and online uh, like extra mode, similar to what every game is doing now. But they did say zero loot boxes. They are very specific. Zero loot boxes, zero pay-to-win, every piece of DLC, every single character, every superhero, every map pack, every, every single thing that comes out. It's completely free. You don't need a season's pass or anything. It's always going to come out for free. So uh, it seems like a long-term commitment thing, and it's going to be pretty fucking cool. So I'm happy with that. Overall, this was a, a really good showing for them, and I it almost felt like they were replacing the Sony <laughs> press conference. Like, Sony pulled out. we got to show off all the stuff that we're putting out on Sony. Because uh, it was probably 50 to 60% Sony-based platforms they were showing things off for. So... Who knows if Sony's actually going to do anything uh, this year. They said they're not going to, but I, I just get this feeling that they, there's a possibility they might just try to fuck with somebody and after Nintendo shows off their Direct, they'll do something in the middle or at the end of the week to show off their stuff. I'd really like them to just have a reveal of what their system looks like or more details to kind of fuck with uh, uh, with what my Xbox has, you know, to bring up that rivalry a bit. They did... Uh, oh, one thing I forgot to mention. I'm going to have to go back for a second here. The Ubisoft show, they showed off some stuff for Stadia. A lot of the games are coming to Stadia as well. Not only that, they announced the uh, the Uplay Plus service, which is like 10 or 12 bucks a month. And what that is, it's the similar to uh, the EA One or Xbox Game Pass Ultimate uh, in that it lets you play games that are brand new for free. Like, not for free, but you, know, you don't have to buy the game. You can get new releases and play it uh, if you're a subscriber. That service is also coming to Stadia. That was their big announcement. So if you're a Stadia, you know, user for like 10 bucks a month and then you pay like 10 or 12 bucks for uh, Uplay Plus, you can then get all of their new releases. You know, you don't have to pay anything extra. You get all of their new releases, meaning you don't have to buy them for Stadia. You'll just have them for Stadia in 4K Ultra like Ultra. This is a complete game changer and changer and completely throws a lot of other companies under the bus. So that is something I definitely get like cuz then I I won't have to basically play Ubisoft titles on any platform unless they're, uh, you know, system specific, right? If it's system agnostic and can go on anything, I'll be playing it on Stadia and be paying for that monthly fee. I don't mind paying $10, $12 a month to get the newest games and it's like a new game every month. Are you kidding me? That's crazy. So back to Square Enix. It was a good show. Uh, I would say both of them were, they were probably the best two shows, Ubisoft and uh, Square Enix. They're the best shows we've seen so far overall. Uh, B pluses, A minuses, uh, I would say to that. Nothing super duper wowed me. Hopefully Nintendo blows us out of the water tomorrow. But I'm pretty tired, so I'm going to get this edited and up. And we'll do our big, big discussion after I do my Nintendo one tomorrow. We'll do it on on Thursday, I believe. Birdman's getting together with me to really recap everything. Because pretty much everything will be revealed or shown by then. So we can really digest all the videos, all the news, and really see who won in quotes or, or who lost at E3. Uh, here's the hint. It's Bethesda. They lost. They're terrible. Anyway, that's going to be it. I am going to edit this and then go to fucking bed. Talk to you people tomorrow. Okay, son. Now you're starting to scare the viewers. Just act normal. I'd ask you to do the same, but I'm afraid that ship has sailed. Why are there so many ostriches? But you have a game that is dipped in the f- Ha <laughs> ha! Ropey, thick, window cocking. <laughs> <laughs>
So, guys, we'll be right back right here on This Week in Geek, only on thisweekingeek.net and many other sites where I syndicate this crap because I'm a media slut. <laughs> I like turtles. Loose like your mom. That's right. No fisting, you say. Anything else you object to? Me lucky tater tots. You've been listening to This Week in Geek. Check out our website at thisweekingeek.net for more geek content. And subscribe to our podcast through iTunes or any podcatcher. If you'd like to comment on this episode, head to this episode post on thisweekingeek.net and comment through Facebook Connect. Or you can call our voicemail line at 817-717-7202. Follow and message us on Twitter at This Week in Geek. And check out our Instagram at twig underscore official underscore podcast. And if you're the good old-fashioned email type, send us an email at feedback at thisweekingeek.net. We'll see you next time. And remember, lower your shields and surrender your listenership. Uh, Genji 2 is an action game which is based on Japanese history. The um, stages of the game will also be based on famous battles which took, actually took place in ancient Japan. So here's this giant enemy crab. Octodad Dadliest Catch will stagger awkwardly on a PlayStation 4. Now, although historically accurate, this game does not contain giant enemy crabs. And now, a thought from Geico Motorcycle. It took 15 minutes to take a spirit animal quiz online. Please be the cheetah. Please be the cheetah. And learn your animal isn't the cheetah, but the far less appealing blobfish. Oh, come on. To add insult to injury, you could have used those 15 blobfish minutes to switch your motorcycle insurance to GEICO. GEICO. 15 minutes could save you 15% or more on motorcycle insurance. Your home is important. That's why GEICO helps make it easy to save on condo insurance. Because home is more than just a place. Home is where you took minimalism too far because there's only one chair in your entire condo and your only entertainment is one card. Not even a deck of cards, but a single card. And all your guests have to share one plate and one fork, but you're convinced that less stuff means more freedom. The GEICO Insurance Agency could help protect the overly minimalist broom closet you call home. Call GEICO and see how easy it is to switch and save on condo insurance.